people that have been ruthlessly slaughtered by the Israeli occupation are still considered martyrs. Children are considered martyrs, okay? It does not mean that like those children are strapping bombs to their fucking chests. Just like Allahu Akbar just means God is great. It doesn't fucking mean I'm going to blow you up. But Americans think, oh, Allah Akbar, I saw it in TV. That, that, that guy, when, whenever someone says it, that means they're, they're going to blow themselves up, right? The headlines at 11 o'clock. Israel's ambassador to the UK has apologized after a senior diplomat was caught on camera saying he wanted to take down the Foreign Office Minister, Sir Alan Duncan. Sir Alan Duncan, who's a strong critic of Jewish settlements. An undercover reporter for Al Jazeera doing an investigation into Britain's relationship with Israel. Investigation exposes a covert Israeli campaign to influence British policy. The investigation led to the resignation of Shai Massad. Yes, the UK version was published and it, of course, created a lot of uh, backlash. Uh, which never really went anywhere, but um, but then the American version was slated to be published, and they stopped it. A senior political officer at the Israeli embassy. Mr. Massot is also heard describing the Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson as an idiot. The uh, diplomat in question uh, no longer seems to be a functionary of the embassy in London. Uh, uh, in so whatever, whatever he may exactly have been doing here, his cover can uh, be said to have been well and truly blown. At the same time, Al Jazeera had been running a second undercover operation. Some of our reporters' covert filming was included in the first series of the lobby. His identity became known. Tony had spent five months inside the pro-Israel lobby in the United States. He'd impressed colleagues with his understanding of the Middle East. You have the resourcefulness and the depth you know, to sort of think strategically about this, whereas most people aren't able to do that. A prominent Jewish online magazine described Tony as the perfect gentleman who became one of the town's best-liked Zionist activists. He did amazing work here. The guys don't stop talking about you. They still talk about you. Tony threw elaborate parties. And apparently anyone interested in telling a story about sinister Israeli influence in America's capital couldn't have asked for a better guest list. Uh, I think Kleinfeld is the guy that went undercover, uh, uh, right? In the new edition they of The Lobby, him. we investigate the role of pro-Israel advocacy groups in this country in the first of a four-part series, how the lobby is being drawn into Israel's covert campaign to spy on American citizens. Using an undercover reporter, Al Jazeera's investigative unit infiltrates one of the most powerful lobbies in the world. Can we get some context, please? We're lost. What do you mean, dude? What, like, this is literally the first fucking three minutes of a documentary that very clearly defined exactly what they're doing. It is literally showing you the, the operations that the fucking... What, 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 what context do you need? This is just a fucking documentary with an insider infiltrating one of the fucking Israeli lobbyist groups that show what level of influence and in in, in propaganda operations they, uh, they do, they conduct in the Western world. Fuck! What more context do you fucking need? I don't, I don't get it. Am I crazy? That's literally the context we needed. They didn't say any of that so far, I think. We examine how the lobby led by APAC, the American Israel Public Affairs Committee, has secured unwavering support in Congress. There you go. Congressmen, don't do anything unless you pressure them. And the only way to do that is with money. What the lobby is all about is to make sure that Israel gets special treatment from the United States forever. Is that Mersheimer? But after occupying Palestinian lands for half a century, the pro-Israel lobby is facing a new challenge. We called for a full boycott of Israel, divesting from it, and eventually imposing sanctions on it to achieve UN stipulated rights of the Palestinian people. A movement to boycott, divest, and impose sanctions on Israel, BDS, was formed on American campuses. 
seems to be achieving its goals threatens future American support for Israel. We believe in. Let me tell you something, okay? Boycott, boycott, divestment, and sanctions on Israel, okay? That was a, a movement that was crafted after uh, the BDS movement against apartheid South Africa. Israel, which also had an apartheid regime, saw its ally, South Africa, uh, a, a, not be able to maintain its apartheid status because of the external pressure applied to South Africa. External pressure applied to uh, institutions like banks and, and, uh, and, and commerce that wanted to pull out of apartheid South Africa. That was the major blow that destroyed uh, uh, the, the apartheid in South Africa. So the reason why uh, there is uh, 36 different states where uh, there are anti-BDS legislation written where, like, if you want to be a fucking teacher in the state of Texas, for example, you have to sign a, a, a form that says you will never support BDS, which is an insane thing, by the way. That is an insane thing that you have to sign. But, of course, and, and a direct violation of First Amendment uh, rules, by the way, but it doesn't fucking matter. Anyway, if you... Uh, if you're wondering how that came to be, this documentary will show that. APAC wrote that legislation because Israel saw the, the, the BDS movement work so effectively against the South African apartheid and decided, oh, fuck, we can never have this happen to us. Justice for all people. So that means the occupation has to end. Israel's Ministry of Strategic Affairs responded with a covert operation to defeat BDS. So the Israeli government leverages Jewish organizations yes. in the diaspora. Absolutely. It's a psychological campaign involving spying and smears. You discredit the messenger as a way of discrediting the message. Just stay on message. And what is that message? BDS is a hate movement. While our reporter monitored pro-Israel groups, he was asked to go undercover for the lobby. You're going into enemy territory. Not for everybody. We are a different government working on foreign soil and we have to be very, very cautious. We have three different sub campaigns which are very, very sensitive regarding data gathering, information analysis, working on activist organization, money trail. This is something that only a country with its resources can do the best. want to win we have to change our ways we have to think differently and this is waging a holistic campaign why was finkelstein against bds because norm finkelstein believes that uh bds uh is is uh in support of the complete evisceration of the israeli state and that is an untenable solution which i agree with by the way i agree with norm on that um i think that uh there is so there's two different conflicting schools of thought here Okay, there are people like myself who believe that the boycott, divestment, and sanctions are to end the apartheid state, and some people who believe, and this is true inside of the inside of the BDS movement as well, that some people believe that uh, this means the the complete evisceration of the Israeli state, like Israel should cease to exist. Now, I don't believe that. Okay. Um, I don't, I don't, and, and that was a, I, I think Norm's uh, opinion might have changed as well, but overall, overall, uh, the, the most popular, uh, the, the most popular forces is uh, a, a, advocate not to completely wipe out the state of Israel or whatever the fuck, it's actually 
a a movement identical to the South uh, the the apartheid ending the apartheid regime in South Africa, as you've said. Regarding abolition of the Israeli state in 2023, if you said this in 1950, you'd have a point, but it's 2023, it's unrealistic now. Yeah, exactly. As long as Israel exists, Palestine is not free. This is not true, okay? I think this is a reductive thing to say. The reality of the matter is very different, okay? It's just not true. I, I, oh my God, okay, I have to, hold on. I'll be back in a second. Against the other side. Take him out of his comfort zone. Make him be on the defensive. Israel is involved in a secretive influence campaign whose aim is to discredit its challenges in the West. In the Air Force, when you want to win, you have to have aerial superiority. If you want to win a campaign, you must have information superiority. And this is exactly the added value Israel capabilities, technological and otherwise, we can bring to the game, and we are working on that very hard. In the United States, the lobby is working with Israel to spy on American citizens. We're giving them uh, data. For example, one day, Sima's deputy is sending me a photo, just a photo in WhatsApp. So you can boycott Israel on a billboard. hours our systems and analysts could find the exact organization people and even their names where they live we gave it back to the ministry i have no idea what they did with this but in fact three days later there were no billboards we use all sorts of technology we use corporate level enterprise grade you believe in a one-state solution, but you believe that that state should be Israel? I don't give a fuck what you call it. You can call it Israel, you can call it isn't real, you can call it whatever the fuck you want, okay? What I give a fuck about is equal rights, equal representation, and reparations for Palestinians, and a right to return for Palestinians. That's what I want, okay? I don't give a shit what you fucking call it. <sighs> Social media intelligence software. Almost all of this happens on social media, so we have custom algorithms and formulae that acquire them. To gather information and to smear their opponents and just ultimately destroy them. In order to understand how the pro-Israel lobby operates, you have to literally be a fly on the wall. If you can't obtain information publicly, you should try to get into the room through other means. Our undercover report. It's really interesting because, like, I've talked about this before when covering uh, Who is America, right? Sasha Baron Cohen. If you remember back then when that first came out, and I love that uh, show. Um, if you remember... Uh, one thing that I brought up was how easy access was when you presented yourself as a, a IDF guy, Iran Murad. Like, these guys literally are so used to uh, having this level of access. <laughs> Everybody fucking chill out about uh, Sidney Blumenthal's son, who uh, obviously I do not agree with, okay? You know... Some people can have uh, good opinions on one issue and then uh, wacky, kooky uh, opinions on every other issue, okay? Uh, there's a lot of people whose brains broke uh, during COVID. Yeah, it broke probably from a large summer sum of cash put in his pocket. Yeah, I'm not here to talk about that. Porter Tony is British and Jewish and had recently graduated from the University of Oxford. He wrote articles and presented himself as a strong supporter of Israel. In Washington, he attended a course on the Israel-Palestine conflict. I'm from the UK, and I, I'm just taking a course at Georgetown here over the summer. He networked in the social circles of the pro-Israel lobby. Hi, I'm Rona. I'm Tony. Nice to meet you. Nice to see you. Oh, yeah. I'm good. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Wow. Hey. After building his profile, Tony was accepted on a training course in pro-Israel advocacy. Welcome to Fuel for Truth DC's second boot camp. Congratulations, everyone, to being accepted. What we're going to do right now is uh, just kind of like introduce ourselves. I'm Daniel. After undergrad, I served in the IDF and the paratroopers for two years and worked at APAC for a year. 
One session criticized the UN agency that provides aid for Palestinians. Children are taught in UNRWA Palestinian schools to hate Jews. Another lecture dealt with the international... I love that because, like, the, the messaging has not changed. Like, I've heard that so many fucking times from UNRWA. UNRWA, with our dollars, UNRWA is teaching children to hate Jews. It's like, bro, they, first of all, they don't hate Jews. They hate Israel, okay? And that's number one. And you know what's radicalizing them into hating Israel? Not the fucking UNRWA schools, but instead the bombs that killed their fucking mothers and fathers. That might have something to do with that. I don't know. National media. Got the fucking media bias. During the last war, a lot of times videos are circulating uh, of, you know, of bombed areas or... Big Spotting media bias. MSNBC, Vice News, Jones. Fox, RT, Vox. Every, every, uh, every ounce of uh, Western media is biased against uh, Israel. A lot of it's from Syria. <laughs> nah, you're reading into it. Yeah, it could... I mean, dude. Black people in uh, apartheid South Africa hated the apartheid uh, regime. It's so, it's so crazy. They must have learned it at school and not like learned it directly by being subjected to untold, um, untold amounts of violence and terrorism, state-sponsored versions of untold amounts of violence and terrorism. Yeah. Syria from Iraq 10 years ago, all this stuff. In role play workshops, they were instructed how to respond to criticism of Israel. Can I have a volunteer? The apartheid wall is cutting off Palestine. Boycott Israel. Divest from Israel. Sanction uh, companies that do business with Israel. It's kind of odd to call it a wall, given that like 90% of it is events. This is a photo. I see a wall. Got it. Why can't Israel do more? It's so funny because they're like they're teaching uh, they're teaching the people to be better debate lords on this, like literally to like disseminate misinformation. Do you see the reintegrated one-state solution as a unitary federalist or plurinational form? I am thinking of Bolivia with increased autonomy for indigenous peoples. Uh, I don't know. Um, I, I don't. I don't think that that would work anyway. Uh, I, I did. Hold on. Let's just. Our undercover reporter played the role of pro-Israel advocate. Israel is doing a lot to help the Palestinians. I say actually Israel is doing all the best that they can, but you know it's a tough situation. The people, uh, businesses in Gaza can't can't freely send their trucks into Israel to sell their goods. I, I think you. Hassan, why do you not cover the woman in Gaza screaming and blaming Hamas? Says stormtroopers ninety eight Z. This is what, look at it, a perfect demonstration. A perfect demonstration of what's going on in the chat, okay? Get the fuck out of here, you fucking Nazi freak. <laughs> Beyond parody, dude. Yeah. Beyond parody. Just straight up coming in here to be like, hmm. Whose side am I on today? Who do I hate more? Uh, Jewish people because I'm an anti-Semitic Nazi or Muslims because I'm an uh, Islamophobic Nazi? I don't know. Play both sides. Hmm. <laughs> I, love, I love a guy having like a 1488 uh, Nazi Hitler face as their fucking username coming in here and being like, why don't you talk about the, the gruesome acts of Hamas? <laughs> like... I find that that's actually a misconception. They do allow their trucks, and what they don't allow is, is dangerous material. Okay, stop. How is this domestic spying legal? Replace China or Russia doing this, and the massive government would be up in arms? First of all, Russia and China do this as well, obviously. Every fucking large power in the world does this. The difference is uh, Israel is allowed to do this because Israel's uh, agenda aligns with ours. That's it. Israel as a state is basically another, like, Another facet of uh, the the American military engine, the American espionage machine. There's a lot of information sharing that occurs between Mossad and CIA. Okay, Jeffrey Epstein is a great example of a person who has uh, may, who may or may not have worked with both of these agencies. I don't know. I mean, maybe someone should ask why uh, Piers Morgan's guest that came after me, uh, former. Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Barak was spotted at Jeffrey Epstein's, uh, you know, 
uh, rape palace in New York in 2016, many, many years after everybody knew that Jeffrey Epstein was a convicted sex trafficker and a pedophile. Why was he secretly going in and out of Jeffrey Epstein's uh, uh, rape dungeon in New York? Hmm. By the way, the Epstein being massaged was a Joe Rogan thing. Wait, no, it's not a Joe Rogan thing. Joe Rogan, Jeffrey Epstein may have been CIA or Mossad spy. Joe Rogan is a fucking dumbass. Just because he said this as well does not change that reality. Also, uh, you know, Ghislaine Maxwell's father literally was Mossad. Robert Maxwell. And before that uh, was... Um, What's the original uh, version of, of uh, the, the intelligence uh, agencies before? OSS. Yeah. You're a dumbass? Wait, what? Like anything Rogan says, something he came... Yeah, like anything Rogan says is something he came up with. Yeah. Joe Rogan, pointing to Joe Rogan to say like, I don't know about the, the epstein Mossad connections or Epstein-CIA connections is ridiculous. Because, uh, you know, he's, he's a dumb goof, but. Yeah, in his defense, Ehud Barak was only at Epstein's mansion more than 10, but less than 100 times in his own words. Let's be fair to the man. I pre-watched uh, the Road to Apartheid Dog and added timers for TNC to Hoscord. It's a lot, so I don't know if it's really good, though. Okay. Yeah. After the course, Tony was accepted as a volunteer at a pro-Israel communications group called the Israel Project. It's a uh, Tony Kleinfeld. Uh, Kleinfeld. Kleinfeld. Like Seinfeld, but with a K. On. <laughs> the Israel Project, known as TIP, describes itself on its promotional videos as a strategic communications group. At TIP, we believe we've found the answer. Thank you, Chatter, by the way, for the TOS. Israel's enemies have left the battlefield of the Middle East and are now fighting on the battlefield of public opinion. What you have with regard to the United States and Israel is a special relationship that is unprecedented in recorded history. Not simply that the United States gives Israel a tremendous amount of economic aid and diplomatic protection. It gives that aid and protection uh, no matter what, right? It's not conditional. And the Israel Project will go to enormous lengths to achieve that end. During his placement as a volunteer, Tony took notes on what he saw and heard in Tip's offices. He worked in what they called the war room, where media and communications are monitored. Staff described having contacts at numerous media organizations. Their primary means of influence is by forging friendships with reporters. Uh, Chatter asks, does that mean any uh, country in the Five Eyes countries could get away with this? Uh, not necessarily. I don't think it's the same. I think the, the level of control that America has over Israel, and uh, I mean, I guess vice versa as well, but the, the collaborative... The... Uh, the, the collaborative nature of the uh, Israeli-American relationship, like these two... Uh, these two countries is is uh, different than all of the other five eyes uh, nations. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know how else to describe it. Like, it's not. I'm deleting twice. If you talk, still talking about the same shit. I heard you like ten days ago. All right, it was fun. Fuck twice and Amazon. What? What is this person saying? Are you going to cover any other news? I keep checking in and you arguing with chatters. They not going to get it. Guess I need a timeout. K, okay, see you later, King. Yeah, you're right, dude. I, I should uh, stop informing my audience on on the, the many different ways in which... I got a, a crazy message. Sorry. Okay. One employee claimed that during talks on the nuclear deal with Iran... Tip applied pressure on the Associated Press news agency to change a headline. 
Is it because of Israel's strategic location to get all this breathing room? That and also, uh, I think the the uh, collaboration between the Israeli uh, security uh, apparatus and the American security apparatus is a little bit more than like the Australian uh, uh, intelligence. Like I'm thinking, like strategic location, Australia would be the closest to, and New Zealand obviously would be the closest to what we're talking about. Like Canada is already America's hat. Uh, the UK is already uh, America's little child. Um, the only one that is like, I guess, strategic location, strategically important as far as its location goes, is the New Zealand and and Australia, because of its proximity to China. Um, and even then, I don't think that they could. I don't think they have the same level. Like, like I don't think Japan right now could get away with uh, uh, the stuff that Israel is doing, for example. Tony read the Israel Project's annual report, which described TIP's mission as building an echo chamber for pro-Israel information. That means using the media to amplify and repeat TIP's messages, as well as what the report describes as neutralizing undesired narratives. Tony saw one document which claimed if we decided to end support for Israel tomorrow they would cease to exist they wouldn't cease to exist necessarily but they would definitely have a much harder time existing uh, I wouldn't say they would cease to exist though they would just have to cooperate with the, all the other regional powers rather than uh, rather than uh, you know engage in like the endless bombing campaigns and the annexation when they feel like it You know what I mean? But you're right. It would be very different than the way that, uh, you know, uh, New Zealand and, uh, and, and Australia operate. That the echo chamber was within their grasp. Weeks before he started, Tony discussed with a senior manager how TIP deals with the media. You can get a lot more done by making questions get asked by journalists. And if you create it from multiple directions at the same time through multiple journalists, then you create a kind of sense of crisis. We develop relationships with a lot of alcohol to get them to trust us. The uh, basically messaging on the following BDS is essentially a kind of a hate group targeting Israel. They're anti peace. We try not to even use the term just because it, it builds their brand. We just refer to boycotters. The goal is. Which is wild because, like, that's why even in a community such as this one, more people are aware of the top of the hour ad break than they are aware of what BDS is. And every time I bring it up, people go, whoa, BDSM, BDSM. Like, they've very effectively suppressed any kind of communication on even the mere mention of this, like, very important, peaceful movement against apartheid South Africa that was successful against apartheid South Africa. And people don't know the history of it, and they don't even know it e even exists, right? But the top of the hour ad break does exist. And if you don't want the top of the hour ad break to exist, all you need to do is subscribe for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account. Here's the three minute ad break now. To actually make things happen now. And to figure out what are the means of communication to do that. In 2005, Palestinian civil rights groups sought a peaceful means to protest against Israel's occupation. They identified goods from Israel and called for their boycott. The BDS movement was born. BDS adopted a nonviolent strategy because we think it is morally consistent and very effective. I think, isn't this guy like on the terror watch list too now or something? Against an enemy that is extremely powerful militarily, we called for boycotting Israel, divesting from it, and eventually imposing sanctions on it, as was done against apartheid South Africa, to achieve basic Palestinian rights under international law. Hey, free Palestine! Long live Palestine! 
Over the past decade, BDS has grown around the world. By campaigning for Palestinian civil rights in land controlled by Israel, BDS believes it has exposed a deficiency in the moral defense of the Jewish state. BDS is saying that what Israel has to do is treat the Palestinians in its midst the same way it treats Israeli Jews. The problem is that if Israel does that, there are more Palestinians, or there will be more Palestinians inside greater Israel than there are Jews. And that means that if you had a system where everybody was treated equally and there was one person and one vote, that you would no longer have a Jewish state. The secretive Ministry of Strategic Affairs, based in the Prime Minister's office in Jerusalem, was given a mission, establish a covert campaign to defeat the BDS movement. אז אני אגיד לך שכשאם אתה רוצה לנצח בניהול מערכה, אתה צריך לעשות את זה עם הרבה מאוד עמימות. כמו שכשעבדתי על סוגיות צבאיות, כמו חיזבאללה, או כספי טרור, או סוריה, או כל מדינה אחרת שאיתה בעבר ניהלתי מערכה מולה כקמן, לא הלכתי מה אנחנו מתכוונים לעשות. השארנו אותו בעמימות. There is a, a fear that BDS in and itself could be... Uh, Omar Barghouti literally lives in Israel. Yeah, I, I remember reading something about him recently that like uh, his, his like not allowed to... Uh, he doesn't have freedom of movement any longer or something. Hold on. What was it? What happened to Omar Barghouti? Let's see. <clears throat> Co-founder of Boycott Divestment Sanctions. He received the Gandhi Peace Award in 2017. Um, in March 2017, Barghouti was arrested in Israel on suspicion of tax evasion of about $700,000. But as of June 2021, he has not been charged with any offense in regards to this arrest. Barghouti opposes the two-state solution because he doesn't believe a Palestinian state is viable and would not resolve the fundamental injustices that have been brought upon the Palestinians. He insists he instead supports a one state solution encompassing all of what is now Israel and Palestinian territories, which these will be replaced by a secular democratic state offering unequivocal equality and citizenship. I mean, basically what I say um, to, and communal rights to both Palestinians, refugees included and to Israeli Jews, Palestinian refugees would be allowed to return to the state, which would have a transparent and non-discriminatory immigration policy. I think that this is um, I think that this is the reason why. Uh, uh, Norm Finkelstein originally uh, misunderstood and considered this to be like uh, a, a destructive uh, force that is impossible. Yeah, oh, he has travel restrictions. Sorry. Uh, Chatter, who said Omar Borgetti lives uh, in Israel. In 2016, the Israeli Interior Ministry refused to renew his travel permit, limiting his ability to travel abroad, and informed him that due to evidence of his center of life being in West Bank, his permanent residency rights were under review. In March 2016, Israeli Interior Minister Ari Ahderi was quoted as saying, I've received information that his life in Ramallah and that his life is in Ramallah and he's using his residence status to travel all over the world in order to operate against Israel in the most serious manner. Um... Br -br 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 -br. I mean, basically, a lot of the counters to BDS is the same great replacement things that you hear, which is that, oh, if you want a one, uh, if you want a, a uh, one state, like a one solitary secular state, that means you want Jews to be ethnically cleansed. How are they going to do that? By allowing Muslims and Palestinians to come back uh, to, to this, this new formation of the state where everybody has equal rights, and then they will be able to... What are you going to do when Israel removes you off this platform? Go to kick. See, this is what is really frustrating about this conversation. This is infinitely more complicated than the way you present it. Okay? Like, people aren't stupid. I don't want to speak uh, uh, out of my ass here, but the idea that you think that, like, uh, you can, you know, that, that, like, Israel is going to personally remove me from this fucking platform is, is psychotic, dude. This does not 
This does not mean that uh, there are literal doxing operations that uh, in the United States of America that work to sometimes dox uh, random individuals, high school students, college students, nurses, doctors, uh, you know, drivers, uh, and the like, like the Canary Mission, uh, you know, the, the Canary Mission Project, okay? But as far as like, um, as far as like, uh, you know, forcing someone off of a platform, especially like a prominent voice, uh, that doesn't come without uh, a genuine pushback. Eye of Palestine is a great example of this. Um, I of Palestine is a great example of this, obviously. And, uh, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. We'll see what comes of this, okay? No, Israel does not control all types of Western media. You guys are so fucking stupid. Shut the fuck up. My main gripe with BDS uh, against Israel is that it will never work in terms of the boycott. We rely on way too many Israeli goods in our daily lives. Sanctions are the only things that will make any sort of change, but that will never happen. Exactly. But I think that it, creating... Pressure on the ground is still a good thing. Oh, my God. Israel does control Western media. You serious? Brother, the Western media is incredibly biased towards uh, the Israeli position because the Israeli position is identical to the American position. The Israeli state being a genocidal apartheid state is quite complementary to America's interests in the region. That's it. Okay, shut the fuck up. There is no cabal. Okay, you're quite literally watching how there is no cabal, and this is a a, a complex sequence of of uh, very legal, above board American institutions and American instruments and in governance that Israel utilizes, just like many of our other allies do for different things. Okay, in this video, in and of itself. If it was a fucking cabal, then this video would not exist. Does that make sense? There would be no reason for this. Because everyone would be like, what do you mean? We love Israel because we are being mind controlled by the Jews or whatever the fuck you think is happening. Government ministers attacked me in person. One of them. Uh, thank you. That's a great one too. Saudi Arabia does it as well. If you want another example. Okay. Okay. But nobody's talking about the Wahhabist cabal, okay? Like, you think it's an accident that Mohammed bin Salman puts on his fucking big boy jeans and comes to America on the eve of, like, the, the uh, before the, the Jamal Khashoggi assassination, you know? And then has uh, uh, interviews with the Atlantic? How did that happen? Threatening BDS leaders with targeted civil assassination, and others threatening to revoke my permanent residency, along other threats. No matter me, Ben Manigia BDS, make him Sharim, Sharim Kaspim, Sharim Irgunim, Sharim Akhirim, in Gormim or in England, did not Israel. Tafkideno. באמצעות הפעלת המודיעין, לחשוף את הקשרים האלה, ובהחלט באמצעות החשיפה הזאת, גם לדעת לפעול נגדם, לבודד אותם, גם להעביר מידע לאותם גורמים מודיעיניים בעולם וגורמים אחרים. ישראל חייבת לבצע סיכול אזרחי ממוקד במנהיגות למול פעילי ה-BDS. The campaign includes monitoring the activities of American students. Yeah, that's a good take, by the way. Yeah, Chad is like, Ari Emanuel is the most powerful person in Hollywood and Jewish, so therefore Israel controls all media. Except, like, Chatters also don't realize that I'm literally represented by Ari Emanuel's agency. You know what I mean? Like, even if someone is a, a Zionist in a position of power, it still doesn't, like, it, it doesn't work in the, in the uh, zero-sum way that you think it does. Okay, you weren't able to finish your thought about what Dr. Ofer Kasif had to say about BDS. I think that there's a lot of counter propaganda against BDS that like unconditionally says it's anti-Semitic. So much so that I think a lot of people think it is. Like a lot of people just like kind of run with that. You know what I mean?
That will get no pushback. What, what do you mean, what? Anyway, let's continue. We're now, for example, in a process of building a new campus. If you want to win the game, you need to know how to be on it in knowledge and knowledge. Our investigation into the role of the Israeli state at U.S. campuses led Tony to an employee at the embassy in Washington. She's American, and her job is to analyze BDS activity for the Israeli government. So, like, nobody really knows what we're doing. Um, but mainly it's been a lot of, like, research, like, monitoring BDS things and reporting it back to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and, like, making sure everyone knows what's going on. Like, uh, uh, okay, one thing I have to mention here is that, like, we, in, in some ways, we literally fucking look at, um, oh, by the way, here, I, I have to point out something, by the way, about uh, Boss Man over here. Endeavor's Ari Emanuel, WME, William Morris Endeavor's Ari Emanuel denounces Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu after a deadly weekend attack. Now, of course, his perspective is, is... Uh, not because, like, um, you know, he, he just like, he's saying it's a massive intelligence uh, agency failure, um, and and he's correct on his position. But you know that doesn't mean that like we are in agreement. Uh, like he's, I wouldn't say he's an anti-Zionist. You know what I mean? But again, like it's not a morally corrupt Bibi Netanyahu exposed Israel and its people to rape, death, beheadings of children, murders of fathers, mothers, grandmothers, and he did it to stay in power. I just think it's time we get rid of this man. Bias towards your boss? First of all, he's not my boss. And I also don't like his brother, who currently is living my dream of being the American ambassador to Japan. His brother was one of the worst mayors of Chicago on a long history of shitty ass fucking mayors in Chicago. Okay? Rahm Emanuel. But agents aren't bosses. They need a lot of research done and stuff like that. When they talk about it in Knesset, like usually I have like contributed to what the background information is. I'm not going to the campus. No, the current mayor is awesome. Organizations and I guess campuses providing like resources and strategy of students needed. Is the Israeli embassy trying to leverage faculty? Or? Yeah, um, we're working with several faculty like advocacy groups that kind of train faculty. So we're like helping them a little bit with like funding connections, bringing them. Oh, uh, fuck! One thing I wanted to say is like, regardless of the ominous music and shit, like a lot of this is exactly how lobbying works, okay? I just want you to understand that as well. Like, this happens in every facet of, of uh, American interest. It is certainly not exclusive to Israel. I think this is... Like, I guess the only difference between um, this and other forms of advocacy is that um, because Israel is like uh, an American forward operating base in the region that they can get away with doing a lot more and also demanding a lot more uh, support as well. Them to speak, having them speak to diplomats and people in the MFA that need this information. So I kind of want to be that resource to show students like, you should really see what you're, you're doing. Here's some information if you need anything at all. We can connect to you, just kind of be that person there for you. Julia was president of the pro-Israel group at Davis, which is part of the University of California. Davis began as a center for agricultural studies. And Some claim lobbying is a core to democracy, but I feel the opposite. What do you think about lobbying in general? Claims lobbying is a, cl a core to democracy. Like lobbying in the old times, when you got like, when you petitioned for a position and got signatures is entirely different than what we're talking about. Okay. Lobbying in the way that it works uh, right now is, is not a core to the democratic process at all. It's a major burden. 
It's a legalized form of bribery, and it goes beyond no. bribery, actually. It, it's worse than that. Because it literally is, is a way for, for corporations to write direct legislation. You will see how bad uh, lobbying is in this situation. APAC straight up fucking wrote uh, 36 pieces of legislation in different states that basically made it uh, impossible to keep a job if you are a supporter of uh, boycott divestments and sanctions on Israel. Its students are known as Aggies. They came to UC Davis, which had a reputation of being like a really pro-Israel. Now it's like the top five most anti-Israel schools in the U.S. Why is that? Because of everything that happened in the last few years. It was just particularly bad. Um, and there's a huge Muslim population in Sacramento, which is right next to Davis. Oh. The growing support for the BDS movement in Davis and the lobby's response to it is part of a narrative that's unfolding across America's campuses. Students for Justice in Palestine, or SJP, brought a divestment motion before the student senate. I was very, very nervous. The entire room was filled. I think we had about 600 students and people from the community coming in to witness this vote. I am here today because, quite frankly, I am ashamed. I am ashamed that my university for supporting apartheid of my people in Palestine. I ended the speech with something along the lines of being on the right side of history and for the university to end its unethical ties with these corporations who were doing uh, brutal things uh, to Palestinians. We knew they were going to win because our entire student senate was all pro BDS and like they ran for that purpose and won for that purpose and we've been pushed out of student government for months. Good evening. My name is Julia Rivkin, and I'm the president of Aggies for Israel. Students streamed the hearing <laughs> online. The pro-Israel group also filmed it with another purpose in mind. Hello, I am the student government leader of Aggies for Rhodesia. <laughs> Please listen to what I have to say. <laughs> Their videos would play a key part in the story that was to unfold in the days ahead. I was waiting to see what she would say. I was waiting for a blow to come my way, and that blow sure came. We have been ignored and disrespected year after year, but we have never been silenced. We are a beacon of peace and inclusion on a campus plagued by anti-Semitism. The talking points were that the resolution was anti-Semitic, um, that it was divisive. If it's divisive... In I mean, if you... If, by the way, the Aggies for Rhodesia thing is a joke, but, like... If you've ever seen Western-focused propaganda for Rhodesia, it is fucking identical to what uh, uh, IDF propaganda looks like for Israel right now, down to the fucking blue-eyed, blonde IDF soldiers they fucking show on Instagram and show on fucking uh, TikTok. And the fact that you either support human rights or you don't, then so be it. The intolerance that spawned this resolution is the same The entire thing looks very rehearsed, very, very aggressive, almost comically so. Julia and her pro-Israel allies had already decided that they didn't want to debate. The forum the night before. I was actually the president of Knowles for Israel at Florida State. I regret that shit so hard. I cried every night for two weeks after October 7th, knowing that I was on the wrong side of history for years and zealously advocated for that wrong. Dude, it's okay, man. As long as you fucking... Change your mind. That's what matters. Like, you know, I, I don't fault people for holding positions uh, loudly and proudly as long as they demonstrate uh, competently the, the capacity to empathize with uh, those who have been uh, victimized by the groups or entities that they represent or that they've been told to blindly uh, demonstrate loyalty to. Me and my team were like, you're going to leave the walkout. And I was like, okay. Um, and they're like, we're going to film it just for our own purposes. And I was like, totally cool. So when everything was happening, like, we went into it knowing we were going to lose. So our strategy was how to, like, ultimately win while losing the vote. This is our victory. And we, who are victorious, need not legitimize the words spoken in this empty hearing. So if you are here tonight in opposition to this I invite you now to stand up, really stand up, and join me in walking out of the room. 
That was a wowing moment. To have them just stand up, everyone just kind of was like, what, what's going on? It was very shocking. As they were leaving, it was just a very big rush of relief to not have that tension, those bad vibes in the room. Um, and so we started cheering, actually, and it was a great moment. If you're standing in the back, it looks like some seats have opened up. But the passing of the BDS motion proved to be just the beginning of a bigger story. In part two, how the lobby worked to undermine the student decision. Those wall stickers, who did them? We don't even know. Couldn't Iran dump money to do something like this for Palestine? What? what? No. First of all, let me tell you something. I don't think Iran wants a fully fleshed out Palestinian state. Okay? I think it serves Iran's interests to, to literally not have that. It's just like it serves America's interest to not have a uh, developed Kurdish nation state. In the region, it serves Iran's interests to to not have a, a Palestinian nation state. Also, having said that, it's pretty funny to think that like Iran has the capacity to engage in in, in this kind of propaganda when they're just permanently sanctioned. Like they are under like <laughs> How about Iran figure out ways to get fucking uh, vials for their medicine, okay? First. Hi. Nice to meet you. Our undercover reporter was meeting an employee of the Israeli embassy in Washington. She had led a pro-Israel group while at university in California. So if you are here tonight, in opposition to this resolution... Students at Davis were about to vote in favor of a divestment motion. During the debate, the pro-Israel group staged a walkout. They uploaded videos to publicize their protest. Our thought was to control the narratives by having the speech that we wanted it to cause attention. We wanted everyone to see us walking out to show that like, this doesn't represent us or we're good about this. Um, so that's how we kind of formulated it. All of us released like 50 op eds and major news sources so that when people made a hashtag and like a whole thing trending, so when people opened their Facebooks, it wouldn't be them celebrating the victory, it'd be us sharing our stories. Once it blew up, then random people, like the Huffington Post, contacted me and was like, Do you have anything to say? And I was like, Conveniently, I wrote an op ed two weeks ago just in case. involved in anything like their entire news feed was Israel stuff and like that was what we wanted because that's how we got the word out there. How do you delegitimize the other side? Delegitimizing them um kind of through that that lens of taking over and like making them sound crazy at their game. The student senator who's Muslim made a Facebook status saying like Israel will fall or like, Sharia law is taking over Davis like we love Hamas like that kind of status so that happened. Like, that's a joke, right? Like, this person is making a fucking joke. But it doesn't matter. Like, it's, like, very obvious that you can just take that and go, well, he's Muslim and he's saying that, so he must be, he must mean it. We had been called terrorists and told that we were Hamas sympathizers, that we want to bring Sharia law to campus and things like that. See? There's motherfuckers in the chat still saying doesn't look like a joke to me. Exactly, dude. That's what I mean. Dude, American brain rot is that powerful. Yeah, dude. Yeah, Muslims are, are do not have the capacity to fucking ever joke about these sorts of things, okay? You can call me Hamasabi every day, but if I were to fucking turn around and not and 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 make a joke about it, you would literally fucking bully me on it. You call me Hamasabi every fucking day. I sit here and I take it. I don't say this is fucking disrespectful. I don't say this is Islamophobic. The moment that I ever adopted that and went like made a fucking subtle joke in that direction, immediately, oh, dude, look at this guy. He's making light of Hamas. What do I always say? 
Those who defend Palestinian emancipation cannot be careless or callous in the same way that those who defend Israel's genocidal actions. This is just the truth. You cannot. You cannot be callous. You cannot be careless. You can't even have a moment of fucking joy or humor. Anything and everything you say will be used against you. And not just against you, mind you. Used against whatever cause you are advocating for. There is a very clear, flagrant double standard in this regard. And that double standard is is not simply uh, an Israeli double standard or a Zionist double standard or a Jewish double standard or whatever the fuck people think it is. That double standard is caused by uh, a, a 20 fucking years of manufacturing consent to dehumanize Arabs and Muslims so we can justify America's actions in, in the Middle East. Okay? Those who are black those who are brown, those who are Latino in this community know this as well. Those who are trans know this as well. You can never make a joke about transing the youth. I can because I'm not trans, right? But if you are trans and you make that joke, someone will fucking take it and take it seriously. Just like when I make jokes about the great replacement, when I say I am, you know, I am doing great replacement by fucking your mom psychopathic right-wingers will take that seriously and go, look at him, he's doing genocide. Okay? My favorite is when some fucking dumb fuck comes in this chat, says some, like, incredibly stupid shit, and then immediately starts crying, like, oh, I'm getting death threats in my PMs. Yeah, it's not cool. Stop fucking sending... I don't even believe you, but... If anyone is actually fucking sending him death threats, you're a fucking piece of shit. Go tell the mods and they'll ban those people, okay? But suck my dick. Also. Hi, everyone. My name's Azka Azka Fayaz. I'm a second year political science major. Azka Fayaz was a committed BDS activist and claims that pro Israel students repeatedly tried to link her to political violence. They just came up to me and said, You're a terrorist. Are you a terrorist? You're going to bring you know, terrorism <laughs> to the student government um, and things of that nature. And vote smart. I know her. It was ironic. She was directly making a joke of that. When I saw it, though, given the climate at the time, I did grow concern. People who were involved, you know, they were like, hey, there's actually uh, a lot of negative postings on social media. They're sharing your picture and the cover photo. It's fucking ruthless, dog. You see this shit? You can't even make a joke about the Islamophobic bullshit that people say about you. You can't do it. You can't fucking do it. Which is wild. Because they can say whatever the fuck they want about you, even in their criticism. Even in their fucking criticisms, they're like, oh, you want Sharia law? That means you're about to be a rape slave to the Muslim barbarians, actually. Like, what do you mean? What the fuck are you talking about? Sharia law means being a fucking rape slave to the Islamic hordes. You fucking animal. Where did you come up with that? Did you go to the fucking racism factory to come up with that take, you fucking asshole? Even in the fucking condemnation, you're being a fucking animal, you know? Hi, Yvonne. With your caption, it's turning really ugly. That caption was reposted and retweeted over and over and over. Yeah, look, look. Shut the fuck up. I would say anti-Semitic pro-Hamas should burn in hell, but she's a Muslim, so that's redundant. Like, it's such a funny fucking thing to say. It's like when Ben Shapiro and, like, right-wing reactionary clown asses go, uh, queers for Palestine? <laughs> More like chickens for KFC, am I right? It's like, shut the fuck up. I know what you think about... I know what you fucking think about queer people. We can see. We can see what you have said guy on a fucking particular subreddit, I know what your perspective is. You're a fucking animal. 
for again. I knew that something big was sort of going to happen. Pro-Israel students were taunted by pro-Hamas students after an anti-Israel vote passed on campus. Listen and watch. Anti-Israel vote. And right after the vote passed, a student senator posted... It's just like an uphill battle, man. For fucking years and years and years, it's always been an uphill battle because you're not like... You're not like uh, launching a criticism against the fucking unjustifiable apartheid state, right? You also have to go against white supremacy, which is an you know antiquated institution that is completely calcified in in American existence. You you have to go up against Islamophobia which was a prominent, played a prominent role in the justification for the Iraq and Afghan occupation. You know what I mean? That's why it's like an impossibility almost. Which is why I can't help but admire the resilience of the Palestinian people, both in surviving under this brutal occupation and apartheid structure, but also for nevertheless resisting and continuing to advocate for their existence and for their humanity, no matter how difficult that battle is. It's unimaginable. this on Facebook. Hamas and Sharia law have taken over UC Davis BRB crying over the resilience. I don't have the capacity to bring Sharia law to the University of California Davis. Um, I don't think any, <laughs> any of us really do have the capacity. But you want it, right? They wanted to try to make me look as evil and violent as possible. How can we use their words out of context in such a way that their victory doesn't seem so victorious anymore? Conveniently, like, the Dead Messman video just happened to do that. Like, when they all started shouting all the walk far as we were leaving, like, that was really nice for us in a way, because it, like, we caught them, um, just, you know, yeah. doing what they're yeah. doing. See? She knows. She knows. That's it. That's, that's a perfect demonstration. Like, when you say God is great, it automatically triggers the fucking racism gene that all of these fucking Americans have. So she knows. Oh, they already look scary. And then they fucked up by saying Allahu Akbar. You know? And then it, like, went viral on YouTube. Anger and tension running high at the University of California Davis campus. But it's the same shit. People were like fucking popping off on the stop anti-Semitism thing. The glory to the martyrs thing, okay? Glory to the martyrs does not mean glory to fucking Hamas. In Arab culture, martyr, martyrdom does not specifically mean soldiers. But people don't know that, okay? When someone says glory to the martyrs, they're talking about the fucking children and civilians that have been killed. But you don't know that. You don't know that. Why should you know that? You've learned nothing about Arab culture. You don't know anything about Islam. And you don't need to because you can be blinded by your stupidity. People that have been ruthlessly slaughtered by the Israeli occupation are still considered martyrs. Children are considered martyrs. Okay? It does not mean that, like, those children are strapping bombs to their fucking chests. Just like Allahu Akbar just means God is great. It doesn't fucking mean I'm going to blow you up. But Americans think, oh, Allahu Akbar, I saw it in TV. That, that, that guy, when, whenever someone says it, that means they're, they're going to blow themselves up, right? It relies on you not knowing. It relies on you not understanding the, 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 the cultural... Uh, significance okay
I'm reminded of that time when that fucking valedictorian said, uh, uh, instead of saying, like, uh, God, what was it? Like, uh, I remember the valedictorian that once said, like, Allah instead of God. And everyone fucking freaked out. Allah just means God. Yeah, she said one nation under Allah. It just means one nation under God. Allah is God in Arabic. Jewish state of Israel. They kept showing it over and over again. And then they just said that the Muslim students forced the pro-Israel students to leave the room. Reports say when the Israel, Israel supporters tried to object to this vote, the pro-Palestinian students you just saw tried to shout them down with cries of Alu Akbar. I invite you now to stand up, really stand up, and join me in walking out of the Of course, we know that they left willingly and they stated that they were going to walk out of the room. It's incredible to, to hear Alu Akbar uh, yeah. shouted well, that, in the middle of this university. And what, is that, and what does that represent, Megan? The subjugation of women, the torture of uh, homosexuals, uh, the, the torture of Christians. The... This is my favorite fucking take. Another thing I repeat all the time, which is that conservatives hate conservatives of other countries for their conservatism. It's like, bitch, what are you talking about? You literally believe the things that you claim Muslims believe across the board. Which already is not true. Unironically, Muslim Americans are more tolerant to the LGBT community than white evangelical Protestants. You fucking asshole. Crucifixion of Christians. That's what it has come to represent. And that's what they're shouting. The pro-BDS activists at UC Davis then faced another crisis. Two days after a resolution passed, unfortunately, someone defamed the Jewish frat house and um, had painted swastikas all over it. Outrageous, uh, just not acceptable behavior at all. What was upsetting to us, however, was they had the media there right away. Disturbing discovery for a UC Davis student. Uh, Jewish students found swastikas painted on their fraternity house in Davis. The swastikas were discovered that morning and around 10 a.m., my, my best guess, and I believe the news media were there by 11. Pro-Israel students say they feared recent events would lead to this. This week has been sort of a bad week to be Jewish on campus. After years of heated meetings, a student body passed a resolution Thursday urging UC Davis to end any... Brother, I'm sorry. But if you think that it was Muslims who did that and not just like literally a fucking Nazi, I don't know what to tell you, okay? Like the, the idea, the idea that it's like, oh, dog, watch out, really bad week to be Jewish on campus. Someone drew a swastika outside of our fucking, uh, uh, outside of our fucking fraternity also happens to be happening at the same week as the BDS uh, 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 protest movement. It's like, hello? Why would that fucking literally be, why would those two things be aligned with one another? Unless you have a specific purpose of trying to marry the two. The Nazi could also be a Muslim. Yes, infinitely less likely, okay? Before you fucking screech about the Grand Mufti in Palestine or some dumb shit, the notion that like uh, it, it, the notion that contemporary Muslims, okay, are aligned with Nazi ideology is a psychotic one. I know there's photos. There's always photos. You'd be like, oh well, these guys heil Hitler. Look, there's that one fucking uh, shop in in uh, Gaza that is like the Adolf Hitler shop or whatever. You're actually wrong. If you think that contemporary Muslims, the contemporary Islamic world is not completely aware of the fact that neo-Nazis in the Western world want to wipe them out. I don't know what to fucking tell you. Fuck! Let me tell you something. Okay, yeah, swastikas drawn by Muslims are essentially zero compared to swastikas drawn by white supremacists. That shit was drawn by a skinhead. Exactly. The idea that Jews in America should be afraid of Muslims and not neo-Nazi white supremacists is a psychotic opinion. 
and vice versa. The idea that Muslims in America should be afraid of Jews in America and not neo-Nazi white supremacists is also a psychotic fucking take. It's not statistically accurate. It's not a real fear. The fucking guy, the landlord that committed that Islamophobic hate crime was not a Jewish person. They were a Fox News watching, right-wing radio talk show host listening, psychopathic Christian weirdo who did the, the, the Islamophobic act of violence towards that six-year-old Palestinian child. Affiliation with companies that support Israel. So this is not out of the blue. We're pretty sure this is directly related. Who were they finger pointing at but us? Why does the world care so much about Jewish people? No hate or anything. I'm just curious as to why we protect them so much. What do you mean, dude? What the fuck? Because we're supposed to care about everyone. Hello? It's an insane question, dog. Also, read a fucking history book. Like, what, what are we talking about? Us. Us who were still on this high of violence. <laughs> Why do why does the world care about black people? I don't really understand. This slavery thing is like I'm just curious. No hate, but like why does the world care about like defending black people and like abolishing slavery? Hmm, I don't really understand. I don't know, maybe because it's fucking morally repugnant? Like what the fuck? Only getting this resolution passed still in high spirits just crushed us. Roseanne Barr tweeted, all the Jews should leave Davis and the rest of the school should be nuked. What? It was a crazy time. A general flooding of Islamophobia by the media. Oh, she's saying like, like uh, everyone that's non-Jewish deserves to get nuked. Oh, shit. And I was dealing with like news outlets and media. And it's it crazy. Was, like, the day after there was some swastikas on campus, and it was like it all blew up. And who, what, being yeah. A job. Those swastikas, like who who did them? We don't even know. I think it's just some like random like white supremacist type people who just came, did it. Oh. Left. We don't think it was students. That's pretty surprising because it was very clear from their behavior towards us and their attitudes towards us that we had done some heinous crime to them and that we deserve to pay for it. Oh, that's crazy. That's crazy. She does acknowledge it. Got it. That's cool. I mean, not, not on, you know, Students who were part of the divestment movement painted swastikas on the fraternity. That's what she was hinting at. That's what she was trying to imply. Why would we act against our interests and, and do that at a moment when we were, I guess, victorious? The fact that it was just so quickly. Why would they do that when they're victorious? Also, why would they do that against their own, like, like who do Nazis hate more? People that have been ruthlessly slaughtered by the Israeli occupation, like, yeah, they hate Jewish people, right? Martyrs. They do. Nazi Children Jews are considered right now, martyrs. It's a, it's okay? a fuckfest for Nazis. It does they not don't know mean they that wanna, like, those they children are strapping they bombs to their fucking the chest. They're like, just like well, Allah Akbar too, just Islamic, means God is great. You know, Islamic immigration is really shitty. If there's one group that the, that the American conservatives, American reactionaries, American fascists hate more than Jews... Is fucking Muslims. They tossed onto us as those who had done this. It was... Not all the Nazis I've seen are jumping on the opportunity to go hard on Israel. Yeah, dude. Um, you, you probably have a bunch of fucking weirdo freaks that I don't even want to give a, a credence to or even name, okay, in here that are taking advantage of the opportunity to act like they're, they have uh, valid criticisms um, to, to mask... Legitimate criticisms against Israel as a way to instill anti-Semitic messaging. But we know who the fuck they are, and we don't watch them, and we don't listen to them, and we know that they're an unserious uh, and, and uh, inconsistent and also fascist freaks. It was damaging. It was hugely damaging. 
that was kind of our strategy. A lot of it was media based, which is like kind of my interest in media. And I'd say that's like 99% of what it means to be successful. That happened. Then there was another swath. It was just like every day something new was happening and I had to. It was weird because they won. Yeah. So you'd think if they would win, why would they do exactly. that? Exactly. Yeah. So, well, that was kind of our whole strategy is we knew they were going to win. Were you in touch with the embassy or were you in touch with like any uh, groups? Pretty much or? all of the groups. Um, not the embassy, I guess our consulate. As well as the Israeli consulate in San Francisco, Julia's anti-BDS campaign had the guidance of several pro-Israel lobby groups. Stand with us helped us a little bit in terms of actual research on the speech. They gave us some like legal research types. You can be critical of uh, Israel being genocidal without it being anti-Semitic. What they're doing is vile. Wait, you, you know that... You understand that like the Muslim students didn't draw a swastika, right? She's just saying she very openly used that, you know, insane, because neo-Nazis hate Muslims too. Stuff. Um, I'm always biased and want to work with APAC, so they kind of helped for like more support. Um, and David Project helped us a little bit. It was more help like gaining contact in like the media world. I guess we needed money to pay for somebody to film the speech. Like we had a Davis faculty for Israel group, and like they were hugely helpful to us. They would, you know, because some of them were retired lawyers, so they'd write legal documents for us. They knew the administration. They were tenured. They had pull. Despite the passing of the BDS motion, the governors of the university known as regents are under no obligation to abide by the students' vote. As for that resolution to boycott Israel, well, UC regents issued a statement saying they will not even entertain the idea. After looking back on everything, I feel a little creepy because of what happened after the vote. People that were affiliated with the group just were smeared and had to deal with this, these very personal crises of the world calling us terrorists and the world thinking that we were this spiteful hate group. It's pretty unequivocal how organized they were, how brutal and uh, ruthless that narrative was and how it affected us in the end. Back in Washington, our undercover reporter was attending the annual conference of the Israeli... I don't know about neo-Nazi, but the SS had multiple Muslim divisions and had a wide range of propaganda linking their ideologies. Yeah, dude. Totally. Which is why, currently, when we call someone a Nazi, we're actually talking about, you know, the the uh, the Third Reich. We're, we're literally talking about, like, a person who's 97 years old, like the Waffen SS guy in Ukraine who got a standing ovation. No, when someone calls someone a fucking Nazi, we are literally talking about modern-day fascists, okay? And modern-day fascists are uh, the Ukrainian uh, uh, Nazi in, in Canada, sorry. And modern-day fascists do not like Muslims. Shut the fuck up. There are far more fascists in Europe right now in support of Israel then there are fascists in Europe right now in support of Muslim immigration. Shut the fuck up. Bibi Netanyahu has collaborated with all of them. That's crazy to me. To, to act like, to act like uh, th this is not a, a, to, just a reality is so crazy, dude. Especially when you think about like Anders Breivik. And, and his manifesto, or the Christchurch shooter, and his manifesto, and what he was trying to do. Like, who do the fucking Nazis hate more, dog? Who do you think? Are we really having a debate on fascists not liking Muslims? Yes, apparently we have to have this debate. Because there are dumb motherfuckers in here who think it's, like, relevant to the current situation at hand. That uh, the, the SS also featured, like, Nazi uh, uh, Muslims. Yeah. Hey, you know who else? Okay. If we're going to talk about collaborating with Nazis, you know who else tried to collaborate with Nazis? The Lehi Brigade. Okay. 
One of the most important formative Zionist brigades also tried to collaborate with the Nazis and thought maybe the Nazis will actually give us a Jewish nation state. So does that say anything about the fucking Zionist movement? No. So shut the fuck up. Dumbass. The American Council. El Kurdo says, why never comment on what Erdogan does in Kurdish areas? Uh, I do. You just have never heard of it or you're just in here to fucking uh, cry and complain and act like I don't do that so you can get a fucking clip out. Talk about it all the time, actually, and have in this process, too. The IAC's role is to connect American Jews to Israel. This year, combating BDS was top of the agenda. I think we need to worry. The polling isn't good. And all of you probably know, if you look at the polls, the younger you get on the demographic scales, the lower support for Israel is. It's so funny. It is, seems to be achieving its goals. Isn't this the guy who, uh, what's her face, had on her show? Uh, Michaela Peterson. Like, we were going to watch that video as well. That's crazy. Yeah, Prager, you guy. Oh my God. So good. So nice. Next generation might actually save us. Fuck no. Future American support for Israel. Younger people are leaving college less sympathetic to Israel than when they enter. The lobby hoped that a new partnership with Israel's Ministry of Strategic Affairs will become a game changer in the fight against BDS. For years, we are trying to defeat the BDS and the Danish Kingsdash movement. We are all on the defensive, and I think we should move to the offensive. Using especially cyber and internet tools to try and defeat this ugly movement. Yeah, well, except, you know, you can't defeat the top of the hour ad break with cyber and internet tools. You can only defeat it by subscribing for $5 or for free at the top of the hour in order to avoid the ad break at the top of the hour. Here's a three minute ad break now. I'm really honored to present my partners here, Brigadier General Sima Vakundi, the Director General of the Ministry of Strategic Affairs, Sima Kriz. The fact that the Israeli government decided to be a key player means a lot because we can bring things that usually are not existing in NGOs or civilian entities that are now involved in this thing. The Israeli government can look at the bigger picture and actually create this coordination and cooperation. We are the only player inside the pro-Israeli network who can actually say that he's filling the gaps. The Israeli official described to members of the lobby the first phase of the covert war. Ambiguity is part of our guidelines. That's why I'm not going to say anything too much about each one of the legs. The first okay. one is intel, intelligence, or data, or information. What we've done is mapped and analyzed the whole phenomena globally not just the United States, not just campuses, but campuses and intersectionality and labor unions and, and churches. We started to establish a project called Israel Cyber Shield. This project is actually a civil intelligence unit that collects, analyzes and acts upon the activists in the BDS movement, if it's people, organizations or events. And we give everything we collect. We are using the most sophisticated uh, data system, intelligence system in the Israeli market. Let's. Yeah, they have um, incredible, uh, like an incredible surveillance apparatus, which they sell to other countries. It's so fun. Like, I think it was it? one is called Pegasus, where one, it, it's so over encompassing that the American government literally has told them. Uh, to not use it anymore, but it doesn't even fucking matter because the American government also secretly purchases it from the Israeli government, which is wild. 
um, many, uh, many countries around the world use it. Pretty sure Pegasus hacked Jeff Bezos' phone, if I recall correctly. Yeah, it's the one that uh, governments, foreign governments use to persecute journalists and, and, and the like. How is this not a Jewish cabal? No offense intended. There you go, 20 month subscriber. Suck my fucking cock. I'm sick and tired of this fucking Nazi bullshit. I can't wait for this fucking dickhead to go back to the mods and be like, dude, of course I was joking. Obviously, I was making fun of like, I was sarcastically making fun of of uh, the dumbasses. I'm not anti-Semitic. I'm Jewish myself, blah, blah, blah. He'll fucking say that and he won't get fucking unbanned. You want to know why? Because you piece of shit are at that point a representative of my community, okay? You're a fucking piece of shit. It doesn't matter if he is being sarcastic chatters. It doesn't matter if he's even fucking making fun of uh, other uh, people who have asked such stupid questions. When you're a 20 month subscriber and you write stuff like that, you know how many motherfuckers are waiting in here to take a screenshot of that and go, this is a sans 20 month subscriber. Look at the community he's fostered. Do you know how much I've heard that over the course of this past week? Look at Assange's community. Look at what he's fostered. As though I haven't spent the last fucking 10 years dedicating my life to combating anti-Semitism. As though that is not that has never been a prominent part of my commentary. <laughs> fucking unimaginable. They can't fucking get me on anything, so they now have turned their crosshairs on on those in the chat. And if they can't find someone in the chat because we're fucking constantly moderating it, like Hawks, then they'll come in with a new account, wait 10 minutes, and write some dumb shit in the chat only to be like, look, look at his chat. Why are you calling him a piece of shit over and over again? It feels like you're posturing over this dude. He probably is in line with you more than those you're trying to appease with that ban. Because I don't... Wait, first of all, if you think that that person is, uh, is asking that uh, question with sincerity, then no, he is not in line with me, and neither are you, you fucking asshole. Here, you get a perma too. Fuck you mean? Listen, brother, if you are a believer in a, in a Jewish cabal, then you are an anti-Semitic person. It's that simple. There is no Jewish cabal. There is a cabal of capitalists. That's it. Some of them can be Jewish. Most of them are white Anglo-Saxons for the most part. <laughs> but this notion that they are operating in a monolithic fashion, that Jews are operating in a monolithic fashion at the behest of Israel is a silly, anti-Semitic, nonsensical bullshit. The amount of Reddit and Twitter posts about your Discord and chat is insane. I thought you were overreacting, but holy shit, I don't think chat knows how insens insanely obsessed they are. Yes, dude. There are probably 700,000 uh, uh, messages uh, spamming by over the course of like three to four hours, okay? And in that, if there are like 10 to 20 that someone can fucking catch before mods get to them, they will use the 10 to 20 fucking uh, messages to be like, look at how fucking racist Hassan is. Or look at how fucking anti-Semitic Hassan is. Or in his community is. Look at how much they love Hamas. They'll come in here and say, while I'm like talking about fucking uh, melted babies that the IDF engaged in, they'll come in here and be like, uh, let's go Israel. Uh, like they'll say shit like that. Okay, and then they'll get banned because it's like very obviously being said in a way uh, that is contentious. And then they'll turn around and go to a subreddit and be like, I just got banned from the Hassan place for uh, the, the Hassan Abi chat for simply saying, let's go Israel or for posting the Israeli flag. Well, look at these guys. They're Nazis. Yeah, you've spoken so highly of the discord. Definitely reflects you. Exactly. I've only threatened to nuke it every fucking and have nuked it in the past multiple times. You have to be a little bit impressed by the effort they put against you. It must mean that you actually have an impact. They feel the amount of effort is merited in countering you. No, it has nothing to do with my impact and everything to do with, like, how unhinged they are. It sucks. I wish they would use it for good. I wish we could unite against, like, common foes. You know what I mean? Like, spend some time fucking shitting on Ben Shapiro in the same way instead of cyber-stalking me, you fucking freaks. Jesus Christ. Especially because a lot of these people also then say, well, we're aligned actually, but I just care more about what Hassan is saying because he's doing this as a detriment to the movement, to the movement. This is the movement I care about. 
That's why I spend zero time shitting on fucking Ben Shapiro in comparison to all of my days in the Hasanabi broadcast, in his chat, in his Discord, screen recording, everything that's going on so that I can use it against him. It's crazy. It doesn't. It has nothing to do with the merit that I bring to the table and everything to do with like the mania of my, of my haters. Anyway, let's continue with this. Take the defense activity that we're doing and make it into proactivity and offense activity. Israel has used cyber sabotage. We suffered from intense denial of service attacks, hacking attacks on our websites. Israel decided to go on cyber warfare against BDS publicly. They said, we shall spy on BDS individuals and networks, especially in the West. We have not heard a peep from any Western government complaining that Israel is admitting that it will spy on your citizens. Imagine Iran saying it will spy on, on British or American citizens. Just imagine what could happen. The Ministry of Strategic Affairs brings together this group called Screen recording discourse is so funny. Same type of weirdo who will pose a teen online as sex and predator for months and be like, yeah, I busted this weird guy. He was sending me weird stuff for months. Yeah, exactly. It's like, you're fucking weird too. Why the fuck are you presenting yourself as a teenager online? Like, you fucking weirdo. Anyway. <clears throat> ay, ay, ay. Well, a lot of people, a, a lot of people just like use any and everything to specifically present, uh, to, to basically like attack uh, their, their least favorite content creators is like very obvious that it's, uh, it has nothing to do with anything. The global coalition for Israel. And it's like leading pro-Israel advocacy groups, um, around the world. My view and the view of Israel's ministry of strategic affairs, which we coordinate with sometimes where we, we communicate with sometimes is, um, like Europe is lost and it's basically over. And like they're turning a lot of attention now to the US because they feel we're on your path. Can I join these? I'd love to. I don't know if you'd love me. But... It's like a pretty sensitive conversation, yeah. but it's going well. If China was doing this, if Iran was doing it, if Russia was doing it, there would be uproar. You would have Congress going after them. You would have hearings. You would have prosecutions. The question is, how does Israel get away with this? It's modeled on General Stanley McChrystal's countdown. Saudi Arabia gets to do it too. Come on. Uh, I mean, listen, uh, electronic intifada is like... Our insurgency strategy Whatever. in Iraq. All right. I'm not going to say anything. a lot from that strategy that has been working really well for us, actually. And one of the pieces is this operations and intelligence brief. We're using social media intelligence, a tool called Radian 6. Every country does this to a certain degree as best as they can. But but like as far as their lobbying effort goes, our allies get to do it. Our foreign adversaries try to do it and usually fail to do it. We're but because Israel's uh, existence works so perfectly in line with our goals in the region... That they get to do it extra hard, more than anybody else. Phasing that out over the next year, and we're bringing on more sophisticated technology that was developed in Israel. An American should not be spied on by a foreign government that is able to access all this information and possibly undermine. Is this something you should be worried about as a streamer, bro? My life is literally fucking being cyber stalked on a daily fucking basis by a group of cyber stalkers that are significantly more diligent and more dedicated than uh, any amount of time or effort some Israeli cyber security firm would spend. Also, I don't say anything that is like beyond the pale. I don't say anything that is unacceptable. I don't say anything that I, I, I should be ashamed of. You know what I mean? That's the other part. And also... I am marginal. I'm a marginal figure. I am not a powerful figure of, of influence or prominence. I'm just like a fucking dude with 27,000 uh, uh, live viewers right now. Like, that's a lot. That's a lot of viewers, but the reality is that it's just like, it's nothing in the grand scheme of things. If you have multiple billions of dollars that you want to fucking target on, on ads and, and a propaganda machine, you would much rather ensure that... Uh, 
you know, you're taking out ads in the New York Times and on YouTube rather than trying to fucking stop like some random dickhead Twitch streamer. Their ability to exercise their democratic rights in this country. So we're not dealing with amateurs. This is not an amateur work. We're dealing with a government that have a ministry at a ministerial level engaged in the systematic targeting of activists outside of its sovereign borders. The only way it's going to stop is if, you know, somebody in the government uh, points out this is illegal and we're not going to tolerate it. And if we do tolerate it, other countries are going to do it as well. There's a company called Census, S-E-N-S-U-S. It's like very pricey though, you know. We had to raise like hundreds of thousand dollars yeah. just for it. It's gonna increase our discovery rate. We're discovering just about everything we need. It's also going to bring new sources online that we weren't able to access in an automated fashion, like message boards. And um, we have ways to crawl message boards right now and to monitor them, but it's like disconnected from the event and activity discovery mechanism so that we want that system to be all integrated. So there, we just signed the contract yesterday for um, them to start that work. They actually already started it. Good friends in Israel that are helping us with that. You would think that since the United States has this special relationship with Israel and gives it so much largesse and protects it diplomatically at every turn and gives this assistance unconditionally, uh, that the Israelis would do less spying here than other countries do. But on the contrary, what we see is that the Israelis are, are probably at the top of the list when it comes to foreign countries spying inside the United States. Our investigation into Israel's covert war against BDS led Tony back to Julia Rifkind. She's American. Dude, uh, Saudi Arabia has so many parallels, dude. Another fucking regional power that we consider to be our most important ally. Also fucking protesting uh, or, or finding protesters and activists or Shias uh, and, and like, you know, participating in the assassination of of these people cooperating with social media, American social media companies that they have, they own pieces to like it's the parallels are incredible. Okay. The parallels are so obvious. Fuck. American and her full-time job at the Israeli embassy is monitoring BDS. She summed up a typical day at the office. I'm not nearly as successful as Israel when it comes to changing public opinion and astroturfing online spaces. Yeah, of course, because um <laughs> because Saudi Arabia is a Muslim country. Also, Israel didn't do 9-11. <laughs> so <laughs> there's like a couple different reasons, but uh, in the post 9-11 world, a bunch of dudes that that uh, uh, that dress like they do in Saudi Arabia are never going to be able to get Americans to go. Yeah, actually, I, I vibe with that guy. From tons of organizations, just trying to get the information that I could to report back and kind of like just talk through some of the issues with those people, see what their plan was, tell them maybe some ideas we've had, give them our support, <laughs> the behind the scenes way. Wow, it just looks like the state of Israel is employing little spies and you can't take a breath without... <laughs> Israel hearing about this lady really loves admitting to everything. Yeah, well, what the fuck is anybody gonna do? You know what I mean? It's not like this, brother. This documentary was not even allowed to be released. Like, what are we talking about? That like Electronic Intifada had to fucking release it uh, after finding it themselves. So, <laughs> like, it don't matter about it. That's why it was funny when that guy, the fucking Harvard professor, was like, wow. Like I'm, I'm, I'm actually, uh, you know, in fear that like, I might lose my job over this, but like, I want to grieve for Israel. And it's like, dude, come on. Like anti-Semitism is a real problem. Okay. Anti-Semitism is a real problem. Anyone that tells you that's not the case is fucking silly. They're a silly bitch. But like, you think you're going to lose your tenure ship because you support Israel? Really? On what fucking planet are, do you live in? Crackhead planet? What the fuck are you saying, dude? Hello? Really? You're gonna lose your tenure ship at fucking Harvard? 
for defending Israel? Are you out of your fucking mind? It's just so stupid. It's like, come on, dude. Come on. Especially ridiculous coming at the eve of like, like every student that basically repeated the Haaretz uh, editorial board's uh, piece in America are now blacklisted from like every fucking Wall Street company. Like imagine coming out and be like, man, it's really fucked up. Like, oh shit. You know, you, you really can't stand with Israel nowadays. Like, what do you mean? First of all, you shouldn't be able to, okay? You shouldn't. You shouldn't be able to stand with Israel as long as it continues an apartheid regime, okay? Like, in a just world, you shouldn't be able to. You would at least have, like, the moral decency to be like, oh, I feel kind of fucked up about standing with Israel. They're kind of doing an apartheid and, like, an ethnic cleansing campaign right now in their open-air prison, right? But that's not the case. Like, that's not that's not going to be the case in America, Oh, no, they can't work in Wall Street. Man, shut up. It's, it's still fucking important that, like, a massive, uh, a massive industry it has been able to successfully uh, decide, like, oh, yeah, if you put your name on it, well, you got docs now. If you put your name on a fucking, uh, on, a, on a document that said, like, w the, the, the same thing that the U.S. Secretary General said yesterday, then you shouldn't ever be able to get hired. Like, come on, dude. Yeah, we're talking about this. Well, well, yeah, you can't be a teacher in Texas if you're pro. If you're too, you can't be a teacher in Texas if you're too pro-Israel. Oh, you mean uh, you can't be a teacher in Texas if you're too, uh, if you're pro-Palestinian. Like li literally, that is a that is a legal design for this. Israel's trying to make the UN Gen Secretary General resign now for saying the violence of October seventh did not occur in a vacuum, which is true. Yeah, stopantisemitism.org is awesome, though. They are pretty funny. Uh, I, I love them. Like, they, they do the... Was it, was it Stop Antisemitism that, like, uh, finds an anti-Semite of the year? And, like, they'll... Oh, here, we got anti-Semite... <laughs> Anti-Semites of the week. Mahmoud Abbas... <laughs> <laughs> bro come on dude dude you are so unserious dude i love that oh they said mahmoud abbas anti-semite of the week yeah 37 states have anti-bds laws in place to prevent public service from being employed if they participate in bds Oh, that's so awesome. Uh, you know, Dua Lipa, Gigi Hadid, Bella Hadid, anti-Semites of the year. Check if you've been an anti-Semite of the week before. No, I'm too much of a fucking little fish. I'm not Mahmoud Abbas after all. It's pretty funny to put like Mahmoud Abbas on this list next to like actual fucking white supremacists like that's a real white supremacist okay lauren witzke that's our actual white supremacist um this powerful arm of the pro-israel lobby left its mark <laughs> wait bella hadid is with bradley cooper who just put his name on the pro-israel letter really i can immediately tell when meeting with somebody where they're trying to thank me like the way that i talk about them like how does them hey patrick you can't talk to this the way they call it at least their 2022 anti-semite of the year was justified yeah no no, no. they follow that's what i mean they get it right sometimes they do get it right sometimes like that was perfectly valid which is why i'm actually that's what i'm fucking frustrated by because like there are anti-semites anti-semitism is a very real problem okay so when you literally turn around and put like real anti-Semites in the spotlight and then use that, it almost use that to like legitimize the, the uh, smear of anti-Semitism against people who are not anti-Semitic for like pulling out of the fucking settlements in the West Bank, for example, it blows my goddamn mind. It's like, what are you doing? Like you are not taking this shit seriously at all. 
Don't conflate like actual fucking legitimate media figures who are openly doing anti-Semitism with like Ben and fucking Jerry's. What what is wrong with you? You're an unserious freak. You're an unserious freak when you do that. Okay. Like anti-Semitism is not a weapon to wield against whoever uh, his, you have grievances towards. You know what I mean? It's fucking ridiculous. Like, yeah, no, they're saying what Kanye did is comparable to not denying ice cream, but pulling out of the, the uh, West Bank, okay? Which, by the way, is not anti-Semitic. Like, pulling out of the West Bank is, is moral and just. It's what Israel should do. Bella Hadid was some cowboy guy, lol. Bella Hadid looks like she got a new man in her life because she was all over cowboy in Texas stopping to pack on some PDA before crossing the street. Yeah, maybe that's why she's too busy fucking uh, not condemning Israel's uh, violent war crimes against Those, Palestinians. The commands that she has been given by too busy kissing cowboys Israeli in Texas. organizations, and she follows it really well. I pretty much all my friends were really happy. All of them. Because whenever we have events at the embassy, and there's like, oh, we should invite APAC people. It's like a joke that, like, obviously I'm going to be the one to, like, write all the emails down. So whatever, they're like, we have to submit names of the lists for events. Mine's like... Don't worry, at Harvard, this is president of Accuracy in Media. Accuracy in Media uses citizen activism to expose media bias, corruption, and public policy failings. And immediately, you look at it, and it's like, Which followed by Charlie Kirk, Russia Today, and five others you know. Okay, immediately, I know everything I need to know about Accuracy in Media. This guy, Adam Gillette, who is the president of Accuracy in Media, says, Don't worry, at Harvard, we haven't forgotten about the anti-Semites on your campus. Starting today, Accuracy in Media will visit them with billboards at their homes. Then they can explain to their neighbors why they don't like the Jews. As always, we'll never share private addresses. I need you to understand something. This is fucking insane. Okay? This is fucking insane. You don't get to this level, dude. You don't, like, how, how dare you? Okay? How dare you think you can do this? Who the fuck do you think you fucking are? And the irony here is that, like, if you don't, you don't have to smoke for actual white supremacists, dog. You don't have to smoke for actual fucking Nazis. Okay? You only have this for people for, for students who, who had the audacity to say that they're pro-Palestinian. I don't know who the fuck this guy is, but what a fucking freak, dude. I don't want to see the blowback for this would be plastering the student's face on billboards. They already did that. They had like literal fucking cars roaming around campus. Anyway, I wanted to show all of this to you because a lot of people have their own pet projects, right? And they don't give a fuck about what's going on in, in, in Palestine they do not give a fuck about what's going on towards uh, Israelis. They just, they're just using this as an opportunity to fucking launch a campaign uh, of, of violence and harassment and threaten uh, and want to threaten them uh, because they just have like different opinions. AIM pushed the Vince Foster conspiracy theories. AIM criticized reporting about the El Mozote massacre in El Salvador. Wait, what? Wait, AIM supported the Vietnam War accuracy in media blamed the media bias for the u.s loss in the war during the reagan administration they criticized reporting about the el mozote massacre in el salvador during the clinton administration aim pushed the vince foster conspiracy theories during the george w bush administration aim accused the media bias uh, against the iraq war again yeah the media is is 
Yeah, I mean, they're just like, this is just another fucking psychotic right-wing uh, conspiracy theory cutout that is playing a role in the radicalization and the brainwashing of your fucking grandparents. Um, I lost the Thamasius playlist. Does anyone have it? Someone send it to me.